Hey guys, so we are just halfway through our one-to-one -one education day. This is the first one in our new studio. Um, I just want to let you know that you can now book them live through our website. You can book group classes also as well, and you can book onto our live shows that we do too. So uh, enjoy this little clip that we've got from this session that we've been doing today. So there's my horseshoe done. Now, if you, could you just lean your head back for me, Sean? A little bit further back if you can. So that's what we're looking at, the horseshoe. Or yeah. a U-shaped part, as mm -hmm. you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. And that's the round of the head, that's where the hair separates on itself. And as you can see, I'm not using any section clips mm -hmm. because I'm looking for the hair to separate naturally. And it always separates naturally at the round of the head. Mm -hmm. And that's why if I've gone if I've gone too high, it will it will kick itself up. Now I'll show you. So if I do this side here and I go too high onto the front, for example, here, I try and pull that down. Something's gonna kick out at some point. Like that doesn't want to sit. Properly, yeah, so that's kicking yeah, out a little bit yeah. there. I don't want that. Whereas if I go follow where the round of the head is, I go all the way around to the back. That sits flat, like so. Just not kicking out. You see that? It's mm -hmm. all sitting flat. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all we're looking for in a horseshoe. Okay, we're looking to find the exact point of what wants to sit in the way it wants to grow. So if we cut it in the way it wants to grow, we're guaranteed a nice regrowth. Mm -hmm. If we cut it in the way it doesn't want to grow, like right now where he's got that asymmetric hairstyle that he already had cut in, yeah. it's not going to grow well. And people determine a good haircut, as you very well know, how well it grows out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You shouldn't, I, I shouldn't see Sean every three weeks. That, that's more down to a personal preference. Yeah. I'd probably see, I'd want to see Sean every five weeks. Yeah. Partly because I can get more clients in, that's, but it's not a financial reason, it's because he shouldn't have to come back to me every three weeks. He should be able to go and enjoy his hair. Because I want him to enjoy it. I don't want him to just have a hair that he likes for two weeks. I want him to have a nice mm -hmm. hair that he enjoys mm -hmm. for like, whether it's a month, whether it be two months, three months. Most of my clients come to me every three months. Hairdresser at the moment. Yeah. So, yeah. As in just mostly just, ladies' mostly. hair. Yeah, I do. I do have a few male clients that I do, but yeah, I just need to get better at it. You know, that's why I said to you at the start, like, how would you do this? Yeah. Just so I could understand that you knew how to you, how you would approach yeah. it. Because we do, and I have done in the past a lot of training with people who haven't got, who've never even held a pair of scissors yeah. before, right? So I do a lot of that. So that is always even harder because at least you can use. You know how to cut hair through your fingers, right? Mm. All I'm going to hopefully do is implement a slightly new way of doing it. Yeah. So it's not going to be rocket science. It's just going to be like, not like reinvent the wheel. You mm. know what I mean? Just going to be mm. kind of changing it around slightly. So comb the hair down, mm. scissor in, flat against the head, pull it out, put your comb under and elevate slightly. Got your guide from the top there, got your mm. guide from either side. I cut. I just get shorter and shorter to the bottom, right? Now, when I say shorter, I just get closer to the knee. Mm. I'm just going closer and closer, but I'm keeping them sections really, really tight. So as you get down to the bottom, it gets a bit finer, mm -hmm. and you can start to really see it. I'm just getting closer to the point where the spine of the comb is now on the nape of the neck. And then what I do is I work from the bottom, and I just comb it up. And as you see, the teeth of my comb are pulling away as it gets to where the first section yeah, is. Nice. And that, what you get is a lovely, seamless mm, mm, taper. Really nice. But again, what you're getting from the side view, though, is we're getting shape in the head now. Yeah. So we're creating that roundness. So we're creating squareness on the sides and roundness at the crown. Yeah. All right.
it's not flat it. either because sometimes no? I I kind of end up with it a bit flat Do you know here. why though? No. So based on that photograph? Yeah. Because I'm following the head shape. Right, okay. I'm creating the head shape. Think yeah. about it. I'm, I'm looking for the points. I'm looking for the yeah. guides. Yeah. I feel like maybe you were following your fingers and yeah, the edge okay, more yeah. than looking for the guide and yeah the okay so what would what texturizing technique would you use in this to create movements mm, i don't really know what i would do i would can't use thinners that's out no the no i wouldn't use thinners i would i don't know if i would just like chop like just chop into it a little bit do that, yeah yeah. Do that. you could also do Okay, yeah, ribbon. yeah. You can also do that as well, that'd be quite nice. What I'm going to do because it's so thick though, like I do the ribbon on slightly finer here, wasn't something yeah. that was overly thick like this. What I'm going to do on Sean's is I'm going to take very, very wide sections, yeah, my hand like that, just sporadic, nothing mm -hmm. perfect, mm -hmm. just grab it in like a fist and pick it up and on an angle to follow the head shape, so you see where we've left that corner in, blunt like that, right. Just over halfway. Yeah. Because we're cutting it on a completely different angle. Short, longer, longer. But we've got all the length above it. So what that's going to do is allow for movement without finding the short bits that are in there. Yeah. So because we cut it on this angle, we've got all that weight of the hair above it, that's going to stand the corner up a little bit. Because mm -hmm. that short bit's going to push that longer mm -hmm. bit off mm -hmm. and give them some more head shape to the corner. Mm -hmm. Like angle. Again, as you know, I'm not sliding, I'm just point cutting straight in. I'm keeping it blunt mm -hmm. with the angle I'm cutting at. It's mm -hmm. all that weight going short where the length is. It's going to stand that length up. It's just going to break it all up. I think that'll fold in nicely as well. So you're, you're hiding the shorter texture mm -hmm. in there, but it is there and it will come out if we mm -hmm. want it to come out. You just can't tell. There's our corner. Straight in like that. But all that length is sitting above it, right? And mm -hmm. that hides it. But it will be brought out when we bring mm. it out with the product. Want to thin the back and sides out though? So how would you thin the back and sides out without using thinners? I would be, without thinners, yeah. I would be stuck. Yeah. I mean, I probably would be tempted to use thinners on the back. Mm -hmm. Well, I do. Because don't forget, all a thinner will do is cut a straight line of shorting. Yeah. But it's the blade that worries me. It's the serration of the blade that I yeah. don't like. It makes it very torn, almost. Yeah. Right? And it does it poles as well, sometimes. Yeah. You could either work from the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Cut in towards the roots. So you get a longevity in it. Right. Right? Yeah. You could pull it out and cut at the cone like that. Because the only thing is what we're going to do, we don't want to create a straight thin line. So what you could do, pick it up, comb that out of the way, go place the spine of the comb to the head, cut, pull away, cut, go back, oh, yeah. cut, mm. pull away. Just so we're not creating that. Yeah, the same, straight the line. same old line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because we've done the, we've already done the palm to palm. We've already thinned out the hair anyway. Feel, feel mm -hmm. how much thinner it feels already. We still yeah. got shorter elements. Yeah, it's just here. That's not another one you could actually do as well. Think about it. Because you could also do this if you wanted to. If there's enough length in there. You can lean the head over towards you. You could pick it up with your fingers, and you could point cut mm -hmm. move your fingers out mm -hmm. if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Or you could. Point cut like that, if you wanted to. It's easier to point cut this way. You see the hair coming off? We're not leaving steps. Just move it across like that. Now, style and product. What would you use on this? Wax wouldn't be for me. What type of finish would you go for though? Um, well, you wouldn't want it to look dry. I wouldn't want it to look dry particularly. Yeah. Um, you want that, yeah. First thing you'd say, to, but what I'd yeah. say first is, how do you want to look? Yeah, okay, yeah. How do yeah. you want to look? Do you want matte? Do you matte. want more shine? Yeah, you want matte? Yeah. Matte, 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 okay. yeah. So when you came in, Sean, that was not matte, that was matted. No, it wasn't <laughs> matte. It, it was, right? But it was hairspray, I think, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, hairspray in it, right? So what I'm gonna use is the texture paste. Now the reason I'm using the paste is because when we put a clay into curls, it's gonna clump it. Yeah. And it's gonna go really yeah. hard and thick. I want Sean to be able to put his hands loose here and still be able to play around with it. Start with the crown. So you want to apply it yourself this. I'm talking to you now, Sean. Mm -hmm. Crown, middle, 
fringe, everywhere else, and rub it in like a shampoo. You need to apply the product before you style the product, okay? Yep. So apply it first, work in. Do not be afraid. I am not afraid to rub this product in because I know how well I've cut this in. I'd only be afraid to if I've left them, if I've made a mistake somewhere. I pull this fringe a bit more forwards. I'm going to utilise what Sean said he would like. Slightly off his face, slightly coming down. Not crop like, but still with a bit of lift in it. So I'm going to do a bit of both. I'm going to bring some of the hair coming forwards, some of it up, and then I'm going to twist it around and bring out. Look at that loose texture we put in there. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, I, th I barely put in cut into them bits there. Mm -hmm. I'm just working around them. I'm just emphasising what we did. Twisting, pulling, moving about. So we've got wave, we've got curl, we've got shape. Like, I mean, honestly, it's, it's the shape of it. It's actually your hair colour, it's actually shaped to my head. Yeah. Which yeah. is not what. And that's why originally when I found you deep into a hole. <laughs> that, the that, rabbit hole, but yeah. That, but that, that was the bit that kind of, like, that yeah. was the... It's, the, it's working with face shape and head shape, yeah. isn't it? Okay, if you look at that, back and sides. Yeah, it's perfect. It's lovely and natural. It doesn't yeah. say it's not, there's no... The thing I always find, right, is that there's not one thing about this haircut that you go, oh, I like that. It's you like the haircut. Yeah. And most of the time, people who do loads of good fades, fantastic, but how many people comment on the haircut? They go, that's a nice fade. What top? Mm. Oh, all this is going on here. Mm -hmm. People say to me now, I like, yeah, I like your new style. Mm. Not like, oh, I like the sides. Mm. We've got a bitch, we've got everything going on here. We've got the haircut going on. Can mm. I tell you the truth? Yes. I have never left a hairdresser without going home to wash it. Really? And now, Oh, that's, no, you that's, don't want to watch it. No, no, yeah, that's it. Yeah, this, this is all, this is, how this is, is just mega. But what I want to show you, Susan, mm. is I want you to look at this from the finish point. Right? Mm -hmm. I want to point out the bits that were really worked on. Mm -hmm. So if you look at this, do you remember I said before it's like a diamond? So everything mm -hmm. looks rounded, mm -hmm. but in actual fact, it's square at every point. Mm -hmm. So you look from every angle, you're going to see a square finish. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not one little bit of roundness going on, everything no. is square, right? Yeah. But from the further away you go, it looks rounded. But from every single angle you see Sean out, mm -hmm. it looks nice, it looks yeah. balanced. Yeah. His face doesn't look out of balance to the back no. of the head. If that was too short there, could you imagine it would protrude everything to the front? Yeah. His fringe isn't too high to anywhere else, you can see it's level, but it's not a flat top. We've, we've, we've done a minimal amount of texturising to create the finish because his curls do it himself. Mm. And the shape we've got through the sides, we've got all that little texture sitting through there, mm. but we've got primary shape as well. And everything's very natural. So there's not one bit that I'm, no one's gonna go, well, that neckline's a little bit low, or that, that neckline doesn't look right. Or, you know, it's just gone with the same shape of what he's got naturally. Mm. So that's why it works, because it's on him. Absolutely perfect. Thank you, mate. Very good. Thank and you we've so never much. met. That yeah. was all done yeah. as a new client. Yeah. It's, lovely, it? it's great. Thank you, sir. Perfect. Thank you very, very much. Have a lovely day, mate. Overloaded? A little bit. Okay. It was good. Okay. It was good, though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah no, it's it's just, you just want to remember everything. Yeah.